of this machine. This happens to be a, a, a hydraulic shear. It's made by Fetton Bender. And the control panel's right here. And I'm gonna kind of talk you through what the startup is and how it operates. Um, first thing you wanna make sure is that there's nothing under the blade or in the guard and uh, make sure nothing's in there. And that's just a visual check before you even turn it on, make sure there's nothing in that machine. This machine happens to be a 70 ton machine. It'll cut you just as quick as it cuts the metal. So you want to have a little care when you're using this piece of equipment. Um, it's only got a four foot throat. It does a pretty good job. It'll cut up the half inch. So uh, now we're gonna go through kind of the starter procedure. First thing we want to do is turn it on. It's got to warm up. It's reading on the gauge up there. Let's see if we can get a little tighter shot of that. Up there at the top. You can see it says 4.25. That's a digital readout. That's how far the back gauge is currently from the blade. The button I pulled is the one that's now lit. That is the start stop button. I'll push it just so you guys can hear what it, the machine does make a bit of noise. That noise is hydraulic pumps running, energizing everything. Turn it back on, pull the red button, and once again, the machine is running. Now, next to the red button, there's a big yellow button that says emergency up. This is gonna bring everything back up to the top of the stroke. If you're caught in this machine, that's how you get out, okay? Now, the machine running, we're gonna set everything kind of the way we want. First thing we wanna do is we wanna change the back gauge. So, to change the back gauge, you go down here to these other buttons. The one that says back gauge on it would be the one I would think I would use. And there's actually a few buttons all together right there. Let me turn this off so I don't have to yell over it. There's a few buttons here. This one is the back gauge. This one is the rake on the blade. This one is the jog run button. Jog run says when you put it in jog, the machine can be moved down through its stroke incrementally, very slowly. When you run it in run, when you hit the black button or step on a foot switch, the machine runs through a full cycle and then comes back up. Uh, jog is used when you're setting things up when you have to adjust things. The blade rake is how much tilt the blade has when it shears through the material. Thinner material, you need less rake. Thicker material, you need more rake. Think of rake as the, when you look at a pair of scissors, this cuts metal just like a scissors cuts paper. Same exact principle. The back gauge button is the one we actually want to use. That's the one that's going to move everything in and out and set the gauge to where we want it. Let's turn our machine back on. It runs through our diagnostics. It's all kind of warmed up. And we got our back gauge kind of where we want it number wise. We're at 425, I'm going to go over here and we're going to change this a little bit. This knob is a speed control. Back gauge is paying out now away from the blade. Currently it's at about 8 inches. Just a couple thousandths over that. This gauge can be turned, this knob can be turned from faster to slower to either speed up or reduce the amount of speed it takes to move the back gauge in and out. Okay, so here's the controls from where you're standing when you operate this machine. Red button's on. Let's see what we're at for gauge. We got about eight inches on the gauge. E up is good, everything's running nice and sweet. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look inside of here. You look down in there, you can actually see the blades, okay? Those two big pieces of metal in front of you, 
that look real shiny and hard, those are the blades. That's what's going to do all the cutting. Now, okay, now we got one thing over here. We got a little gauge over here. It says three eighths or half inch. See how that's moving? That's the rake. Okay, it took the blade, the main, main blade, and it moved it up and down. Now, when this machine cycles, the front part comes down, locks the piece in place, and then the blade runs through its cycle. And everything's cut. Now, let me show you so let me show you that again so everybody gets a feel for what's happening. Big part in the front comes down. Now, once this thing engages, it, see how it comes back up nice and quick? That's when it's in run. We switch it to jog. See how the blade stays down? Now, if I switch it to run, it should let you go. If you get pinched under the hold downs, it's bad. It's going to crush you. So you want to be really careful of that. Um, let's go around to the back of the machine. Okay. So this is the back end of the machine. You can hear the hydraulics running. And we're going to try to get a little shot of that. We can up here a little bit. There we go. That's where the back cage is, it's right in front of us. And then beyond that, we see that little bit of light up there is the blade. Now, when you cut something, it's going to fall off and drop back in this bin. At least that's the idea. There's the bin. Couple of words of warning. Don't put your hands beyond this yellow barrier. This is the hold down. If you're going to get caught up in this machine, that's where it's going to happen. If you go to cut parts, stuff this short won't make it. It'll fall between the blade and the hold down. You won't have any way to hold it down. What'll happen is it'll kick up and it'll jam in there, and then we'll have a problem. Uh, This is a piece to help hold down the stock and help so you can feed it through the machine rather than try to reach in there and pull it back. All you got to do is push this stuff out the other end. Don't try to pull it back if you can't reach it. Whatever you do, and I'm seriously, oh, get out with this. Don't put your hand beyond this guard. You are going to get hurt seriously with that, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to really be bad. It's not so much that the blade's going to get you, but this holdout comes down with some extreme amount of force and it will crush your fingers. Okay, see this piece? There's a boatload of slag right here. Don't cut stuff like that in the shear. What the slag does is it chips the blades and just dulls them up that much quicker. It's just going to make us have to do a lot more maintenance to the machine. It doesn't do any good to cut stuff that's got big slag adhesions on it. It just wrecks things. So you gotta be careful with this machine. There's safety first, safety always. Don't put your hand or anywhere in or by this machine where you could get pinched or cut. That's the primary thing. When that hold down comes down, if you have your hand underneath this, it's gonna pinch you. And that's gonna really hurt. So you gotta watch where your fingers are on this type of equipment all the time. The other piece is, remember where the emergency up is. If something does happen, it'll back the machine up to let you out. The last thing is, if you're cutting on this machine, 
be aware of people on the other side of the machine. There could be somebody in the back picking up stock from, that's been sheared, so you wanna make sure they're not in your way. Hopefully this has helped you guys with this machine. This machine has been really reliable. You see them a lot in metal fabrication shops. You see them that are really big. You see them that they're a little smaller and lighter than this, but they really do a, a tremendous job for shearing and for cutting things up. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you guys get something out of it.